astrology friends and family from around the world this is lada from astrolada.com and these are your july 2022 video horoscopes to watch the extended version where i also talk about world events uh, and all the rest of the 12 signs are together in one video check out my main channel lada dunchiva or to watch the short version you can watch it at my channel, new channel, Astrolada, where there is one video for each of the 12 signs, which is seven, eight minutes long. And by the way, before we start, I want to tell you that this is the last time this year that I'm making, uh, that I'm offering my courses, astrology courses made by me at a promotional price of 25%. So grab the deal <laughs> if you're interested in learn astrology with me. Now let's begin. Aries. July 2022, we're using Tropical Zodiac for Aries, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant. Um, don't forget that the whole month Jupiter continues to be in your sign. And what, no matter what else is happening in your life, Aries, this is a great, great uh, support for you. Um, no matter what other areas, like you'll see after that, certain areas will be a bit more tumultuous. Uh, I would say almost to the end of the summer, there is strong protection around you because Jupiter, the great benefic, is spreading its wing uh, over you, watches over you. And Jupiter becomes extremely powerful in July because it's stationary. It kind of stops moving in the sky as if it's stuck in one place. And it's, let's say, it's just like when someone's sitting still in a... Um, in, in uh, it, they have more heaviness rather than if something is moving fast. So there'll, there'll be a great focus, let's say, a great concentration of power into your sign, into our sign areas, especially the earlier born areas, those towards, you know, that are around nine degrees areas, that uh, uh, late um, March, early April, they'll feel a very powerful concentration of energy and uh, switch in the mentality because Jupiter rules the higher mind, the perspective, um, the higher mind that can see things from a bigger perspective. And when Jupiter is changing sign, is changing direction towards the end of the month on the 29th, but the whole month is stationary, you can notice a slowing down that's happening within you that allows you a, a wider breadth of vision like a stealing of the mind almost that is happening. The stealing of the mind allows a download of information or of wisdom. Jupiter is the planet of wisdom to kind of um, instill themselves so to become in the more quietness and the stillness of your being, of your mind, because you are areas, you know, you're ruled by areas. The slowing down of the most benefic planet, this slows down all the commotion around you, even if things are happening around you, it's kind of like your perspective still stays more still, more wise, and you're able possibly by the end of the month or the beginning of next year, uh, next month, uh, August, to have like a powerful insight into something, uh, some problem that you've been dealing for a while or some issue. Uh, and often issues and problems are caused or they stay stuck in us because we can't change our point of view about it because we can't, uh, uh, we, we keep seeing it from the same perspective, but Jupiter changing direction towards the end of the month will allow you to change perspective as well. And maybe some kind of a Eureka moment, revelation can happen for some of your areas, but it also indicates that some um, opportunity from the past, from the end of the month, will come back, will grab your fantasy, your attention to be worked on again, something that you've thought about already, something that you started before, but you haven't completed, something that needs you for the next four months almost while Jupiter is retrograde to really put some extra work on it to see it and, and Jupiter will give you the opportunity to see it from a higher perspective, different perspective than how you imagine this opportunity would be. So at the end, it will turn out somehow differently when Jupiter turns direct again towards the autumn. Uh, but just be prepared that you might be working extra and getting different perspective on something, on something that already as an opportunity existed in your life. It might be like an old a career opportunity, especially for Aries Sun that is coming or career project 
or something connected to opportunity with another more powerful person that brings it back to you because the sun in areas symbolizes such people. If it's your moon in areas, it can be connected to your emotional world, to your feelings, to your emotional bonds and relationships or family life that something is coming personal life or maybe going back to a place that you want to be in um, or if it's your ascendant overall your whole life. Uh, so interesting, um, you know, especially uh, especially powerful it will be for areas born around 7, 8, 9, 10 degrees, you know, check out the degrees that you have. All right. Then um, areas you're going to have uh, on July the 13th, Oh, in, on July the 13th, there is a full moon in your 10th house with Pluto. It might be time to put boundaries with some powerful people. 10th house is authority figures, institutions, bosses, or father figures, uh, especially if such a toxic. And maybe Capricorn is more like to, uh, the energy of Capricorn is to, to, to prevent, to put boundaries, to say no, or... Uh, the 10 houses, maybe the full moon is also to complete something, to bring it to an end in regards to your career, in regards to a work project, um, and to release it as well. Uh, but Pluto, because it's with Pluto, there might be some powerful, let's say, clashes with authority figures, with uh, bosses or with institutions that you might feel overwhelmed or overpowered by such. But Pluto asks you also to stand your ground and to be powerful yourself. So watch out from July 13th or a little bit after for the next two weeks for such developments to happen and to have the ability to say no, which is what Capricorn is, to have the ability to be very more structured and organized. And you have a very strong emotional response pushing you in that direction because it's a full moon uh, to remove toxic influences from your life or toxic structures from your life or structures that are dead and have outlived their life, whether it's from your career or from relationships with authority or parental figures. Uh, or to complete some project as well and to see the results of it. Um, and towards the end of the month, there is a new moon in Leo in your fifth house, which Aries will probably enjoy a lot because it's trying Jupiter from your sign. So you're going to start feeling a lot uh, excited towards that time and new opportunities will appear like a creative project and you have to grab it as well. But actually, it, because Jupiter is retrograde making a trine to it, so something that you already have like uh, opportunity or skills or resources or ideas will help you implement that new idea that comes into your life. So keep this in mind. Um, and something good can happen and positive that's the birth of some new opportunities regarding your children or some new opportunities or renewal of romantic life because this is the fifth house, some romantic experience that you have uh, that is very enjoyable and pleasant and excitable for you as well. And also fifth house is to have fun, to enjoy yourself, maybe to do some new hobby or some new um, uh, parties, going out, adventure around that time, shining, being in the center light, being in the spotlight, attracting attention, uh, being more flirtatious, being more magnetic. This is the fifth house, makes you more magnetic, more others want to be around you, you shine like a sun somehow. You can feel quite good towards the end of the month. <laughs> I would say after the 23rd already, July. And the last most important thing that's happening is that there is a huge conjunction, a very rare one between Uranus, Mars, and the North Node in your second house area. So you're going to probably feel it the whole month, but something new is brewing and it escalates towards the end of the month, the beginning of the next one. But there is a new beginnings, powerful new beginnings. All three planets are planets of something new, might be even a bit shocking, surprising, very sudden, very fast, connected to resources, finances, material matters. Um, uh, connected second house also rules the family in ancient astrology. So some big shift or change and you needing to adapt very quickly in regards to that. Some shocking, surprising developments that are happening there, but it's especially connected to uh, finances, money, resources, and that you might be looking for new sources of income, new sources of uh, food or resources and such matters. And they can develop very fast, you know, out of very, very, very fast. Um, out of the blue, it can come in a sense. So that's a very active area for you as well, this material side. 
on a more spiritual level, the second house is your self-worth. They can be like a huge breakthrough that shakes up your values, your value system, uh, and how, you, how valuable you consider yourself, how your self-worth, as they call it. They can be like a break, big breakthrough, big shakeup. It might be triggered by a crisis situation of some sort, but that makes you reevaluate if you have your business, the prices. So if you have, uh, you know, if you sell your services, how, uh, how well you value yourself. And it doesn't all, only need to be self-worth connected to material value. It can be self-worth connected to what you consider yourself worthy to be in your environment. So very, very interesting developments, but I think overall areas is very protected this month with a lot of positive help from Jupiter and the new moon in Leo.